In this short video, we're going to review how you can use molar mass as a conversion factor. For example, how many moles of oxygen atoms are in 5 grams of oxygen atoms? From the periodic table, we know that 1 mole of oxygen atoms weighs 16.00 grams. Okay? So how many moles of oxygen atoms are there in 5 grams? <clears throat> well, we can start with what's given, 5 grams of oxygen atoms, and using our equality from the periodic table, um, set up a per expression that says for every 1 mole of oxygen atoms, those are going to weigh 16 grams. All right. And so the grams of oxygen unit cancels, multiply or divide 5 by 16 on your calculator and you get 0.3 moles of oxygen. So atoms. So if I have 5 grams of oxygen atoms, I know that I have 0.3 moles of oxygen atoms in that sample. The next question says, how many atoms of oxygen are in 5 grams of oxygen? All right, the previous question was how many moles? Now we're asking how many atoms. Well, whenever we convert from atoms, uh, we have to uh, first convert to moles and then to grams. All right, we, we don't know how many atoms are in 5 grams directly. We don't have a direct conversion factor. So what we would do is say, um, I'm going to convert from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen to atoms of oxygen. And the conversion uh, factors that I'm going to use here are the molar mass of oxygen, molar mass of oxygen for this conversion factor, and for this conversion factor from moles to oxygen to of uh, oxygen to atoms of oxygen, I'm going to use Avogadro's number. Okay, so I can set up my conversion path. I've got five grams of oxygen. And I know that for every one mole of oxygen, it's 16.00 grams of oxygen. The gram of oxygen unit will cancel here. And now I'm in units of moles of oxygen. For every one mole of oxygen, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen. My mole of oxygen unit cancels. And when I do the math in my calculator there, I get about 2 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Okay, let's look at another example. How about let's use the a molar mass as a conversion factor um, to answer this question. How many moles of elemental oxygen are there in 5 grams of oxygen? We need to remember in this case that elemental oxygen O2, um, 1 mole of O2 equals 32 grams of O2. So I just start with my 5 grams of O2 and multiply by my per expression here. I'm going to put my gram unit on the bottom so that my grams cancel and I'm left in units of moles since that was my uh, question. And in this case, when I put it in my calculator, I get 0.2 moles of oxygen. I'm rounding to one sig fig. It's about 0.15 or 0.16, but I have to round up there. How many molecules of oxygen are in 5 grams? Well, if I already have the moles, I can just start right there. You could go all the way back to grams. I could just say if, um, in 0.2 moles of oxygen, which is how much I know is in 5 grams, I have for every 1 mole of oxygen, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules of oxygen, and if I put that into my calculator, I get about 1 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen. Okay, So it's very easy to use the molar mass as a conversion factor, and as a matter of fact, that's what's done regularly in chemistry. Since we can't count um, molecules or compounds or atoms, we have to weigh them. So we're constantly going back between weight and uh, number. Here's another one. Use molar mass as a conversion factor. Um, if you have 25 grams of sodium oxide, how many moles of sodium oxide do you have? Well, you start with what's given, 25 grams of sodium oxide. 
from the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass for sodium oxide. It's 77.98 grams per one mole sodium oxide. The gram unit cancels, and I'm left in units of moles. And when I do the math there, I get 0.32 moles of sodium oxide. The next question says 25 grams of sodium oxide consists of how many moles of sodium? So in this case, we need to convert from grams of sodium oxide to moles of sodium oxide to moles of sodium within that particular compound, that amount of that particular compound. So we'll start with, um, we'll use our molar mass as our conversion here, molar mass, I'll abbreviate MM, and we'll use our, what we would call formula stoichiometry to convert from here to here. And so we start with 25 grams of sodium oxide, convert to moles of sodium oxide using the molar mass of sodium oxide, or one mole of sodium oxide. Now I'm in units of moles of sodium oxide. I need to go to uh, moles of sodium, and what I know is for every one mole of sodium oxide, I have two moles of sodium. I can see that in the formula. Okay, and when I plug all that into my calculator, I say there are 0.64 moles of sodium in that amount of sodium oxide. Twice as much sodium as the formula unit. That makes sense. Let's do one more. Using molar mass as a conversion factor, we have 157 grams of calcium phosphate. It consists of how many atoms of oxygen? Okay, let's, this is going to be quite a few steps, so let me just slow this one down a little bit, and let's decide what's given is 157 grams of the calcium phosphate. And what's wanted is how many atoms of oxygen are in that mass of calcium phosphate. So let's figure out what kind of conversion path we're going to have to take to get from here to there. We're going to start with grams of calcium phosphate. All right, and we want to end up with atoms of oxygen. All right, so we are, we're starting with a mass, and we have to get to a number. So the first thing we have to do is get to moles of the compound, calcium phosphate. Okay. Then we have to get to moles of oxygen. Then we can get to atoms of oxygen. Okay, so the conversion factor here is going to be the molar mass. The conversion factor here is going to be the formula stoichiometry. And the conversion factor here is going to be Avogadro's rows number. Okay. So here we go. Now we can work the problem, starting with 157 grams of calcium phosphate. We're going to convert to moles of calcium phosphate using the molar mass. We've already figured that out right here. And the molar mass um, from the periodic table is 310.18 grams calcium phosphate per one mole of calcium phosphate. Okay, now we are in units of moles of calcium phosphate. I need to go to the moles of oxygen using the formula stoichiometry, and that tells me for every one mole, just looking at the formula, phosphate, for every one mole of phosphate I have two phosphate, or for one mole, excuse me, of calcium phosphate, I'm going to have two phosphates, which means I'm going to have eight moles of oxygen. Okay, and then the last thing is Avogadro's number. For every one mole of oxygen, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms. And so when I put all that into my calculator and calculate it, I end up with an answer of 2.44 times 10 to the 24th 
atoms, that's a lot of atoms, of oxygen in just 157 grams of that mineral.